On this episode, I get the pleasure of speaking with Michael E. Gerber. If you're not already familiar with the name, he is the author of The E-Myth, a best-selling book from the 80s and is still considered one of the best books on entrepreneurship. If that doesn't ring a bell, you can read about him and his work in Forbes magazine and the Wall Street Journal. Michael and I speak about how most mortgage brokers are actually entrepreneurs. We discuss the importance of identifying your niche and going all in. Listen and learn how you can scale your business of one to a business of 1,000. Welcome to the Million Dollar Mortgage Experience Podcast. Listen in as CEO John Maddox of Fund Loans reveals tips, secrets, and origination ideas to fill your pipeline with million dollar opportunities. Welcome to the podcast, Michael. It's a pleasure to have you here with me. Oh, it's a delight. Thank you. So uh, one of the uh, videos that I saw that you had posted was fascinating when you started talking about uh, the founder, right? The founder of McDonald's. You said, I believe you said he was in his 50s when he started McDonald's. Yeah, Ray Kroc didn't start McDonald's. He was selling multi mixer molded milk machines right. to McDonald's and they kept on buying them <laughs> and he went to see what in the world they were doing um, how could they possibly have the need for as many multi mixer <laughs> molded milk machines as they did right. and he saw this stunning business they were doing something right oh it was amazing so right. he walked in and asked them if they'd ever franchised it and they said no they thought they would but they couldn't and he said well why can't you he said they said well look up there and they pointed above the store on the hill behind it and that's where their home was <laughs> so effectively they could look down on their business every day keep go their eye down on and it. work in their business every day right and nobody can do it like we can and he said what if they could <laughs> they said no nah, but they couldn't he said right. well would you give me the franchise rights to mcdonald's and i'll do it so that in fact you couldn't tell the difference between how you do it and how we do it would you do that and he convinced them right. to give him the franchise rights he was 52 years old see that's the key there 52 I I think, and back then, would you say a 52 today? I mean, they say 30 is the new, you know, 40 is the new, 30 is the new, what is it? 40 is the new 30, you know, right? Uh, uh, but back then, I think 50 w- was a little bit older than you'd say today because people are a little more, you know, uh, younger at a 50, you know, today. So it's, yeah, it's, but even thinking about it, he started a company that became a multi-billion dollar enterprise. And started at 52. And he started at 52 years of age. You don't do that. Whether the, whether you're 52 today or no. you were 52 then, it doesn't make any difference. Nobody does that. So my point is that you can re- reinvent yourself at any age. But of course you can. So a lot of people, I think, you know, in the mortgage business, they get real depressed when the market changes. You know, they they think, oh, man, you know, we're going through a high rate rate hike. So I'm not going to be able to get, you know, make the same amount of money that I'd made, you know, when the rates were low because there's a refi boom and you can make all this money. And it's easy to it's easy to make a lot of money when the rates are low. They call it low hanging fruit. So uh, how does someone who's in this rut of not being able to, you know, how do they change and get out of that rut when the low hanging fruit is now, you know, nowhere to be seen? Well, you understand that the low hanging fruit is a condition. And what's true of most people on the planet is that they're shaped by the conditions they find themselves in. Right. The difference between them and Ray Kroc or um, Tony Robbins or um, anyone sure. who's successfully created an enterprise is the entrepreneur creates the conditions that they then pursue. Hmm. They don't aren't shaped by the conditions that they find around them. So the difference being, you got to shape what you're about to do in a way that 
enables you to do something nobody else would be able to do. It's kind of like being proactive versus reactive, would you say? Well, it is proactive versus reactive, but it's more than that. In short, there's a way to do that. And most people think that entrepreneurs are born. In other words, people like Tony Robbins are born, they're not made. Right. Well, we've proven over the past 40 years that entrepreneurs are made, they're not born. Right. And they're made in a very specific way. We call it the eightfold path. Okay. There is a method to our madness. Hmm. And so I can literally awaken the entrepreneur, the creator, hmm. the imagineer, as Walt Disney would call him. Right. In any person on the planet, provided they're willing to study the way that is absolutely critical to creating a life beyond belief. They got to be open-minded. Well, they have to be open-minded and they have to have a will. So I like to say, and you've heard this expression countless times, um, if there's a will, there's a way. Right. Without the will, nothing's going to happen. Without the way, I don't care how willful you are. Sure. Nothing's going to happen. So when you combine the will... With the way something remarkable occurs. And that's the work we've been doing for the past 40 years. We've effectively designed a process hmm. to awaken the entrepreneur within anybody who owns a tiny, tiny business, a real estate agent, a real estate broker, a mortgage broker, right. um, a landscape contractor, a doctor, a lawyer, an Indian chief. It doesn't matter what anybody wants to do right there's a better way to do it absolutely and i think mortgage brokers even though they don't claim to necessarily be entrepreneurs a lot of them are entrepreneurs because they've got to build their pipeline they got to build their own business they got to find someone that can market for them they got to you know fill in the gaps where they have weakness and they got to really know themselves so that they can know what to do to supplement where they're where they're weaker well key to our work has been the fact, and it is a fact, that most small business owners, most real estate brokers, most mortgage brokers, most landscape contractors right. aren't entrepreneurs. Right. Even though they're out on their own, they're really self-employed. Sure. In short, they're really technicians suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure. Sure. Doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, busy, 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 busy. Right. And trying to produce something that's impossible to be produced the way they go about producing it. So right. that's why there's been a field that we in fact created way back then in 1977 when I started the Michael Thomas Corporation, which was the first business development firm on the planet. Hmm. It was the very first business coaching company on the planet. Wow. So we created the very first coaching system hmm. that we could in fact replicate faithfully for any kind of company, any kind of client, any kind of business on the planet. It's, it's 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 not rocket science, right? Businesses work in a way. They got to find a customer. They got to provide a product or a service. Then they got to exchange that. And it's, it, it, no matter what you're selling, whether it's you know selling apples or selling you know landscape service or selling you know mortgages, right? I mean, well, I would disagree with you in one thing that you said. Okay. You said it's not rocket science. Right. Yes, it is. It's rocket science. It is rocket science. I think meaning you don't have to go to university to figure it out. You have to. No, have you a, don't have to go to a university to figure right. it out. You really got to go. There is to, a science to it. You is gotta, what you're saying. You've got to go to school. Right. But you understand you don't have to go way to school to do that, and that's why we created Radical U. It's the only entrepreneurial development school on the planet. In fact, everybody listening to us right now can become a student of the Eightfold Path. And the Eightfold Path is really critical. The first step in it, you have to have a dream. The second, you have to have a vision. The third, you have to have a purpose. 
The fourth, you have to have a mission. And those aren't just empty words. Sure. They truly define the very clear, unique personalities mm -hmm. that entrepreneurs possess. Right. A dreamer, a thinker, a storyteller, a leader. An entrepreneur is a dreamer. An entrepreneur is a thinker. An entrepreneur is a storyteller. Right. Entrepreneur is a leader. Every single guy you're going to be interviewing here will absolutely agree with you. A absolutely. dreamer, a thinker, a storyteller, a leader. I have a yeah. dream. I have a vision. I have a purpose. I have a mission. Right. Once your folks, your mortgage brokers begin to understand that the dream, the vision, the purpose, and the mission shape everything they're about to do. Mm -hmm. And everything they're about to do distinguishes them from every other mortgage broker on the planet. Right. They suddenly understand the importance of it. I like Just that. Just like Ray Kroc understood the distinction between what McDonald's did and everybody else selling hamburgers. Right. That's that's a very good point. <clears throat> I think uh, mortgage brokers need to actually do what you said. They need to take a moment to have the to write down their goals, right? To write down the dream, write down the vision, you know, know where they're going. You got to know where you're headed. You got to have a vision of what you want in life in order to, to get that. And, and I think for mortgage brokers, a lot of them want, they just want the next deal. We all want to just get the next deal, right? right? It's like they're thinking only everybody wants the next deal. It's yeah. just, where's the next deal? Where's the next deal? And, and, and instead of stepping back, <clears throat> taking a moment to figure out that's like looking right only only you know right in front of you versus you know pulling up seeing a macro you know view of of what your of what your business could be and what where your business needs to go or want where you want your business to go and and if you do that then if you don't do that you're never going to get anywhere you're just going to get to the next deal the next deal and maybe not even get to the next deal but i i agree i mean i've always had from a young from a young age you know wanting to if I wanted something, I'd print it out and I'd put it up on my, you know, on, up on my wall. And then I would work hard like a bicycle. I work hard to get it. And then, but I always would think about what it, what it was that I wanted to do and wanted, wanted to achieve. And then you work towards that. Is that kind of similar to what you're saying? Um, a bit. It's an element of it. A bit. Okay. Um, let's look at what Ray Kroc did at McDonald's. Um, I, I believe strongly that you want to emulate what individuals have accomplished by creating something no one else thought to create in a way nobody else had done it. Sure. So Walt Disney created Disneyland. Right. Before Disneyland, there was nothing like Disneyland. Right. There's little carnivals. Yep. There was <laughs> nothing right. like Disneyland. It was original. Sure. Before McDonald's, there wasn't a McDonald's. So Ray Kroc set about creating his franchise prototype. You understand, he went to work on his first McDonald's store mm -hmm. to create a franchise prototype, an operating system that effectively would become the key to replicating that operating system 37,000 times right. around the world. Now think about that. He didn't just have an idea. He didn't just have something down on a piece of paper. Right. He didn't just have a few words. He had a method to produce an outcome hmm. that he absolutely rigorously could define and replicate faithfully sure. again and again and again and again in the hands of kids at minimum wage with a 300% annual personal turnover. Think about that. Wow. Every single McDonald's hamburger stand standing there, you've seen it, you see the golden arches. Sure. Yeah, I've the seen The golden the arches too. say it all. Yeah. Every single place there's a McDonald's, you can recognize it by the golden arches. So how is a mortgage broker... So you got to ask the mortgage broker, what's your golden arches? Interesting. What's your system? What's your method mm -hmm. that 
earmarks you right as opposed to everyone else right and that takes creativity to find what that is and and i think right now the obvious is you know they buy leads you know they can do internet marketing they can go uh you know talk to real estate agents and and get leads from them but but that's what everyone's doing right that's that's the the pack you know following the pack what we try to do on this podcast is teach people some new ways. And you, you, when you threw out those self-employed people, I actually said something earlier. You said a, a business coach. You were a business coach, or you you started the first business coaching. In an earlier podcast, I had said uh, that I had this idea to where you could get referrals for self-employed mortgages from a business coaching place because they talk to self-employed borrowers, right? And so if self-employed borrowers need cash out for their business or they, you know, they're renting and they just want, you know, they want a home and and they want to, you know, the write-offs or and all that, that it would make sense for them to go speak to some business coaches. But you know, so there's ways to think out of the box when when it comes to getting referrals. But how would you take would you pick a certain, would you say like I pick a certain, like I'm going to go after CPAs or I'm going to go after divorce attorneys and then create a system around that? Like how would you do that well, as far as a system? But of course, so there are any number of keys um, to succeeding as a mortgage broker. Right. Um, who's your customer? And so you might define your customer as chiropractors. Mm -hmm. All we deal with is chiropractors. So we specialize in chiropractors. We specialize in helping chiropractors. Buy um, homes. Right, buy a home. Right. We specialize in helping attorneys. Um, we specialize in, we special. So So you've got to find a niche is what you're you're saying. You're beginning to define who you are. Hmm. And so there's a difference between a chiropractor, you're saying, and a acupuncturist. Well, what's the difference? Sure. Well, I have to discover what the difference is. Right. And so if I spend my time discovering what the difference is, I'm refining my understanding of what the difference is, and I'm refining and defining the system through which I address that difference. So as I begin to do that, I'm building my franchise prototype. Mm -hmm. So understand there's lead generation, lead conversion, client fulfillment, Mm -hmm. the three essential systems of every company. Right. How I generate leads, how I convert those leads into customers, and how I convert those customers into clients. Those are three very definable systems. Sure. Those three definable systems will enable you, as you refine your ability to do them in a significantly better way than anybody else, to find your business opportunity in a way that nobody else has defined it. Sure. So that's what I call working on your company rather than just in your company to create your franchise prototype. How important do you think branding is around that? Well, it becomes your brand. Right. So you understand your brand is simply an expression of who you are. Mm-hmm. And obviously who you are is visual, mm-hmm. it's emotional, it's functional, and it's financial. Sure. So a brand is visual, emotional, functional and financial. So you go to work on your company visually, emotionally, functionally, financially, to build your visual, emotional, functional, and financial systems. Right. And effectively, you then see, that's what Ray Kroc did at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. You then see, that's what Steve Jobs did at Apple. Right. You then see, that's what every great entrepreneur does to define their product, which is their company. Yeah. So your company is your product. 
a lot of these uh, mortgage brokers, and I see it all, all the time, they put their name as the brand, you know, like, you know, O'Connell Mortgage or, you know, O'Connell and Associates. I just threw that name out there. I don't know any O'Connells, but you know what I'm saying? It's like they, they use their name. Is it, Do you think that's a smart thing to do or do you think well, maybe, maybe it may be smart if your name means something? Sure. So you understand if your name doesn't mean anything, it's not smart. Right. It's just uh, ego, It's the right? name of your business. It's not the name of the guy. Now, my company is called Michael E. Gerber Companies. Right. Now, why do I call it Michael E. Gerber Companies? Because Michael E. Gerber's name, brand, right. is um, deeply embedded in the small business marketplace. Sure. So it means something. Yeah. You understand? It's not sure. about me. Right. And there's there's like real estate, famous real estate agents that have been on, you know, the different shows on the on TV, you know, HGTV. And, uh, you know, so they get their name out there. And I, I could see where that, you know, you want your name to be recognized. But there might be something to creating a name that's around what you're doing. Like you said, with the chiropractors, if you're going to go after getting loans for chiropractors, you could call it, you know, chiropractor mortgage or chiropractors lender lending, you know, something around that's not, you know, that's being really general, but, well, you, but you understand the name, um, only represents the form your company takes. Sure. The name is identified visually the golden arches mm -hmm. the name is identified emotionally how we feel when we go buy what we buy at mcdonald's right um the name is functional it's how it works when i go to buy at mcdonald's mm -hmm. and the name is financial <laughs> It's how much it costs when I go to buy at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. So Ray Kroc's immediate first impression, because at the time when McDonald's was McDonald's and Ray Kroc was selling the multi-mixer malted milk <laughs> machines, <laughs> yeah. they were coming to the, um, they were walking up to McDonald's and buying their hamburgers at the window. Right. That was the first McDonald's. What's astonished him was how many hamburgers somebody would get up to buy. Hmm. There were only, I think, 15 cents at the time. That's so cheap. So you, you, you understand. So <laughs> it was astonishing to him. Yeah. Yeah. That was the financial model. Right. So all of that comes together into a product. So you design your business product in such a way that it has visual impact, emotional impact, functional impact, and financial impact. Mm -hmm. So you can take it apart and put it together to construct what I'm calling your franchise prototype. So a lot of mortgage brokers, that's great, by the way, but a lot of mortgage brokers are like a smorgasbord, smorgasbord of, uh, of loan products. They don't really emphasize certain products, right? So they're just, we'll do FHA, we'll do VA, we'll do conventional, we'll do non-QM, we'll do bank statements. We'll, you know, they, just, they lay it all out there and they market it like that. Where, and you know, some of them might send out letters that are geared directly for veterans, right? Or they might send a letter that's geared directly directly for cash out or something like that, or they might, you know, but well, how important is it to, to really define your niche and to pick? It's not only two... important, it's absolutely critical. It's critical. You understand when you talk about this hodgepodge of products, you're creating confusion, right? The last thing in the world you want to create is confusion. Yep. What you want to create is a sense of purpose and a sense of order. We do this. This is all we do. Right. We're the best in the world at doing this. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason we only do this as compared to that and that and that and that. Sure. Because we studied this. We became expert at this. Right. We became the best on the planet at this. So when anybody wants this, mm -hmm. who do they come to? Right. Us. It's like, you know, you don't go to get eye surgery from a general doctor, you go to an eye surgeon. Of course. Go, so I, I get that. So it's a really uh, important point. Specialization. Specialization's key. Specialization I is key. I guess to be successful, 
that's that's really key because if you have a you know hodgepodge you have all these products you could get a get by you know and just kind of do this whatever kind of falls in your lap but you're not going and being proactive then if you're just waiting for different deals to fall in your lap if you know what you want and you know what you're good at and you know what you're going after you're being you're being that you know that spartan of uh well but you do understand it's not knowing what you're good at it's becoming good at what's important. Sure. What, what's uh, so it's not like a need out in the market. It, so it's selecting what you're going to be the best at. Right. Not just being, in quotes, what you're good at. Sure. Because you can good get good is, at anything. If you, you, you can be good at anything. Right. We're not here to be good at something. We want to be great. <laughs> we're here to be great at something. Right. And that's something we're going to be great as differentiates us out in the marketplace. That's who we are. That's what we do. That's where the brand lives. Mm. So the brand is tied to what we're great at. And Mm. we choose to be great at that because it's the most important thing on the planet. We selectively decide what we're going to be in business doing. And then Mm. we shape our business to be the best of anyone doing that. Right. Like every it. single one of the guys you're going to be talking to here, every single the guy, every single guy you have talked to here, selected what they're going to be great at. Right. And they own that. That's important. To, that's... And if they don't own that, they've been wasting their time. Right. Good point. So with that, uh, how do you know where the market's going? You know, when you... Real estate agents can see pretty easily, well, it's softening because there's no buyers, right? There's It's softening because there's, you know, I get less phone calls on my listings. But, you know, in mortgage, in the mortgages as, as well, when the rates go up, you know, it's, it's yeah, you can tell the market's shifting and changing, <laughs> I, right? I, I want to I give you just a very clear example of why that's the stupidest way in the world right. to do anything. Right. Watch the market today. So today, China decides um, to buy uh, American um, uh, bonds, whatever. Right. Um, The market goes up. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, China decides not to. The market goes down. Right. Hear me. If you're in the business of going where the market is, you're a fool. The greatest investors in the world don't follow the market. Mm -hmm. They make the market. Mm -hmm. So hear me, you decide what business you're going to be in. Right. You decide what's in fact important, not just for today, but for generations. Do you understand McDonald's is identically the same today with minor variations Mm -hmm. than it was in 1970, <laughs> in 19 freaking 70, <laughs> do you understand? Yeah, it works. Why? You understand? <laughs> it's the not same, broken. Don't the same, fix it. <laughs> a 24 billion dollar a year enterprise selling hamburgers, French fries, and malted milks. Hear me? Yeah. It's the same. Nothing's changed. Right. And then there's Burger King and Jack in the Box. They've all followed. Right. All, all of them. Hear me, it hasn't changed. Right. Same old, same old, same old, same old. The best at what they do and the way they do it. Mm -hmm. So effectively, I'm saying you shape the market. You determine the market. You are the market. And the market. To do that, though, you have to know where where there's a need right supply and demand so you got to know where you do but that's the market right so you got to create when you say create your own market talk more about that um, unpack how a mortgage broker would create their own market it's very very simple um there will always be mortgages right always Yep. There will be mortgages for $100,000 homes. There will be mortgages for $200,000 homes. There will be mortgages for um, um, for apartment buildings. There will be mortgages for et cetera, et cetera. There will right. always be mortgages. Good point, yeah. Always. Somebody's got to borrow the money to buy the property. Right. There will always be somebody lending money to buy property. 
Sure. So effectively, I already know I'm going to be in this business for the rest of my life. Right. So I'm going to choose a place to be. Mm -hmm. Now, I know there are always going to be $100,000 homes. I know there are always going to be $200,000 homes. Right. I know there... You follow me. I follow you, yeah. Yeah. I know that. And I know that'll be true 50 years from now. Right. So I'm going to specialize in one very critical component of the market. That's what I'm going to do. Yep. I'm going to become the McDonald's of that very specific market. In your particular case, it's jumbo loans. Right. And I presume a jumbo loan is a $2 million loan, a $5 million loan, a $100 million loan, whatever. <laughs> I know there aren't very many $100 million loans. Not right now, no. No, I know they're not. You understand? Right, right. But I do know there are a significant number of $2 million loans. There are. In fact, there are more $2 million loans today than there were 50 years ago. Right. Aren't there? Absolutely. But of course, the price of property has increased dramatically. Same with the hamburgers. <laughs> the same. Yeah. My point being, I choose. You choose. Now, once I've chosen, now I'm going to study that. Become an expert. I'm going to become so brilliantly intelligent mm -hmm. about all of the intricacies right. of a, in quotes, $2 million piece of property. Mm -hmm. That nobody is going to be as bright as I am about that. And that's the differentiator. And that's the differentiator. Now I'm going to build out my practice to be able to do that. And I'm going to build my practice in every city where I know there's going to be a $2 million piece of property right. that's going to require a mortgage. And I would say that mortgage brokers should go out and get licensed because it's not hard these days to get licensed in multiple states, but to expand their market kind of like, you know, you McDonald's. Let's not worry it. about them expanding yet. Let's not worry about that yet. Right. Because if they were to expand today, they'd be stupid. Well, I just mean like getting getting licenses, not not starting a, an office no, there, I, I got but it. being able to do yeah, a but loan. But they can do say. that later. Sure. They can do that later. What I would do is to help them build their franchise prototype. In short, once you've elected to become a jumbo loan provider right once you've selected that niche mm -hmm. then you've got to become expert in right. that niche i'm going to teach you how to do that but i'm going to only teach you how to do that if you're seriously determined to become the best in your marketplace at that right because the only people i associate with are the people who are electing to be the best in their marketplace at mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Are you one of those? Absolutely. Right, That's Jonathan. what I'm saying <laughs> to every single Everyone needs broker to, yeah. listening to me right now. Are you one of those? Yeah. Do you have the will to become the best in your industry? Because you can. We've got the way. We do. If you've got the will, we've got the way. That's right. And now I'm going to take you through a process that's going to enable you to become the best in your marketplace. Right. Associating yourself with me. Now, I just gave you the story right. you need to say to every single broker out there in the business. Yeah. We don't do business with everybody. We only do business with, the best. with somebody. And somebody who's elected to be the very best in the marketplace, because that's who we are. Right. It's good stuff. You got it? So where can we find your, you have a lot of stuff online, but where can we find some of these materials that... Well, uh, it's very, very simple. Um, every single person listening to us right now, simply take this down and get it. It's a free book. Okay. I just published it. It's my, I think, 32nd book. Wow. But it's the only free book I've ever published. Okay. And it's published as the key to our legacy. I just turned 82. So... 
Happy belated birthday. <laughs> so, well, uh, not just. I turned 82 on June 20th, 2018, which means I'll turn 83 on June 20th, 2019. So you've seen a but lot I'm of leaving you a gift. <laughs> and like the it. gift is called Making It On Your Own in America or Wherever You Happen to Live, A Journey Toward Radical self employment <laughs> and it's a book defining the eightfold path mm -hmm. for creating a company of one and turning it into a company of 1000 mm -hmm. it's the secret to growth i like that eight steps the book will take you through every single one of those steps and then Every single one of you get to come online and join us at Radical U. Okay. It's the only entrepreneurial development school on the planet. It's a five-year school. Okay. When you graduate, you graduate with a Master's of Business Design. Mm -hmm. Because we will have walked you through the process to take your company of one, you, the broker, in Poughkeepsie or wherever you are, right. and grow it to a company of 1,000. Mm -hmm. Hear me. To grow it like McDonald's. You get to do that. Everybody gets to do that. And we provide you with the way to do that. But first of all, read the book. Go Good. to yeah. free book dot michael e gerber dot com and we're going to put it down in the link too so and there you go and get the book and yeah. read the book and then contact us at radical you dot com radical easy to remember dot com you got it that's easy to remember but that takes people to invest in themselves but right of course which if is you, which is the key to, if you've to the got start. the will we've got the way right that's Absolutely. the point well, thank you for sharing that. I, I have a couple more questions, if you have time. Sure. The uh, You said you're 82, right? Ha, you've seen some cycles in this business. Where, <laughs> where do you think we are right now in the mortgage real estate cycle? Um, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it, it really doesn't matter. And let, let me tell you why it doesn't matter. It's because you shape where you are right. in the real estate business. Mm -hmm. In short, you select where you're going to be in the real estate business. You're growing your company to become stellar right. in that segment of the market. And you simply pursue it mm -hmm. whole hog plus the postage mm -hmm. and you will do it. Right. Understand there's no best time or worst time. You people would say, yeah, but Michael, in um, in what, what was it five years ago when the the, the 2008, 2010, yeah, 2008, crash, yeah. and, and on and on and on and on and on. Hear me, it's just fluctuations, fluctuations, fluctuations. But if you're deeply, earnestly committed right. to it, you will succeed through it. Right. Every single time, you will succeed through it. Right. That's good. Yep. Um, last question. So what do you think of the phrase, busy is a choice? Busy is, is a choice. Is a choice. Everything's a choice. Everything's a choice. Right. You understand, whatever you do and however you do it is a choice. Mm -hmm. So you get to choose. Right. So do you choose stupid <laughs> or do you choose smart? And what's smart? Well, every great growing company is built systemically. Mm -hmm. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. And they own that way of doing it. That's smart. Right. The greatest investors on the planet will provide you with the way they invest. They don't invest the way he invests. They don't invest the way they invest. Mm -hmm. They invest the way they invest. Who's the best investor on the planet? Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett. So does Warren Buffett ever make mistakes? Always. Definitely. But is War Warren Buffett smart? Of course. Of course. He buys what works. Mm -hmm. And at the heart of what he buys is always a system. 
Mm -hmm. He doesn't buy anything for which there isn't a system. So look at what he buys and you'll better understand and best understand why he's such a smart investor. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Think McDonald's. Think McDonald's. Think McDonald's. And the minute you do, you'll understand the secret to Mm -hmm. great investing. That's a great movie to the founder. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, If you haven't seen that, I'd I'd recommend it. Um, You said something about mistakes, making mistakes. And that leads me to a question I like to ask guests is what, what was your favorite failure or your favorite mistake that that caused you to learn a good lesson. (laughs) Hear me. I have made mistakes every year of my 82 years. Um, I am Mr. Mistake. I am continuing to make mistakes. The only reason I've survived and thrived is because I persist through every single one of them. Right. So when people listen to me talk, they say, my God, Gerber, you're 82 and you're starting a new enterprise? (laughs) What are you, out of your mind? (laughs) Yeah. Absolutely. So will you be too? When you suddenly understand how absolutely brilliant the opportunities are oh, here. We're in a great every time. Single one of I us. mean, the, the internet has changed everything. It's, it's, opportunities are everywhere. Everywhere. Um, I, saw, I saw a Lamborghini the other day, and the yep. license plate said failure. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yep, you got yep. It's just about, it's not how many times you fall down, right? It's how many times <laughs> you get up. Getting up, getting up, getting up is the key. Well, this has been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. My delight. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for listening to our podcast. If you guys are looking for more content like this, we have a Fun Loans YouTube channel where we give away more tips, secrets, and origination ideas. You can also email us at info at funloans.com. And if you've made it this far, I think it's safe to say you like our content. So please subscribe, share, and send us your scenarios. Let's fund loans together. 